June 1st, Newark, New Jersey pay-per-view, Islam versus Poirier. Ooh. Let's go. Shit. Oh. Co-main event, five rounds, Strickland versus Costa. That's a bang. June 29th, <laughs> Connor versus Chandler. <laughs> Dustin Poirier gets a little pat on the back title shot against Islam Makhachev. Conor McGregor is officially back at 170 pounds. He's actually back this time. This is no BS. And, of course, Sean Strickland and Paulo Costa are going to be going at it for five rounds for a co-main event on the Makachev card. And I think this is a really bad business move from the UFC to announce these fights on the same night as UFC 300. Before I break down these fights, not a good move. The biggest event of your promotion's history outside of a couple McGregor cards, just wrapped up, let all of the big moments bake in the algorithm. Let all the fighters that did really well get their shine. Let the fans and the content creators and the media talk about it for the next 24 hours at least while it's at its most relevant. You don't want to fucking water it down with some other big fight announcements. And also, for the fight announcements, you're going to have to compete with UFC 300. They should have waited a couple days. They should have waited till like a Tuesday this week where we don't even have a fight on Saturday, which means we don't have anything to look forward to and we're going to have a serious come down from an amazing card. Give us the announcement then. I think it's a fucking terrible move for the UFC to announce these nonchalant at the post-fight press conference. I just, honestly, it's ridiculous. There's not a good argument to be made as to why it's a good business move. So, little bit annoyed at that just because I feel like we could have been so much more hyped for these announcements and I am certainly hyped but again I'm more excited to talk about UFC 300 and what just happened it is what it is though again uh, I, I would love to know the logic behind this yeah you could say that it's on a big stage and everyone's gonna watch the post-fight press conference well everyone was watching the press conference this week and the reporters messed it up. Maybe you could have saved it with an announcement there when the whole world was watching too. Especially when the next day, Friday, is a bit of a slow day because everyone's kind of burnt out talking about the card because we've been doing it all week. All right? Announce it then. Announce it on the week after UFC 300. Keep the ball moving. Stay relevant when the down times are going to come. All right? But whatever. Let's get into these events. The first thing that I'm going to break down is that Conor McGregor is, of course, going to get fucking smoked. All right, unless Michael Chandler, which we can't put it past him, goes out there, forgets he has a brain, and points down to the center of the octagon like Holloway did yesterday, trying to be a badass, and gets knocked the fuck out with a big meaty hook. And you know McGregor's been throwing a lot of big meaty hooks because McGregor's number one style of training has been on the big round pads with his coaches and yes men and, and, and house music in the background. There is no way... No way, if this sport makes any sense whatsoever, I know the Chandler's a little bit older. Conor McGregor has been seen going through heavy withdrawals throughout the past couple of weeks on hard substances. Who knows what Conor's taken? He's been drinking, he's been partying, he's been snorting, he's been inactive, he's been training with yes men, he's not been in the gym grinding like a madman, he's been traveling the world filming movies. There's no fucking way. I'm picking Conor McGregor, or there's no way I even want him to win. Okay? Screw like an in-depth prediction. I don't want McGregor to win. Now, when I say that, don't get me wrong. If McGregor does win, it's better for the sport. It is. If McGregor wins, it's better for me as a content creator who wants to make multiple videos about Conor McGregor. So, I mean, I, I guess in a way, I kind of take it back. Like, I wouldn't mind him winning. It would be cool. It's a win-win for me, but... For the sake of reality, for the sake of, of logic, Michael Chandler should go in there and clean up shop and make this dude look easy. If the world makes sense, Chandler should go in there and knock him out cold. And I kind of want the guy that's actually been taking his career serious to get a win over the addict that's been frolicking around the world that thinks he can just hop back in the cage like it's nothing. And I know there are going to be some McGregor fans that are going to say, dude, this is a good stylistic matchup. We, we know the deal. No, it's not. All right. I don't care how we did against Nate Diaz at 170 pounds. That was in 2016. That was like 10 years ago. All right. He was actually hungry back then. That was before the Floyd Mayweather fights. Conor McGregor 
should get sent to the shadow realm and he should get buckled with the first couple of kicks that hit him if michael chandler just sticks behind a couple of low kicks i think he should win this fight but you never know connor could just come back there and, and totally fluke it up with, with the left hand he could rock chandler or chandler could go in trying to have a a big slugging moment and he could fail miserably so it is in some way shape or form going to be competitive just because of the lack of fight iq that chandler has but if this world rewards people that work hard and people that take their career serious then michael chandler should smoke conor mcgregor all right but I'm looking forward to the buildup. I can't wait for the embeddeds. I can't wait for the trash talk. And I can't wait for crazy madman McGregor to big brother Michael Chandler and, you know, kind of show him that he's the fat cat of the UFC and you're the you're the biggest B-side if there ever was one. You're the B-side if there ever was one, Chandler. So I can't wait for Connor to big bro him and to have a lot of funny moments in the buildup. And yes, if he wins, that'll be pretty cool. It's not time for an in-depth breakdown right now. But again, please... I want to have a reality check moment for the McGregor fans more than anything else. And it's a big risk for McGregor putting his career on the line. He does not have to come back. He doesn't need the money. I'm sure he's going to get paid a lot. I would wonder what his new contract looks like or what the UFC agreed with him on. But um, again, if he loses, you're going to be looking at a damn near 500 career record for McGregor, it seems. So let's get on to the next one. Dustin Poirier versus Islam Makhachev. The most undeserved title shot ever for Dustin Poirier. Let's give him a round of applause. Just a total pat on the back. Total pat on the back for Dustin Poirier. And on one hand, I, I understand why we want to keep Islam Makhachev active. I totally get it. Listen, and I know coming from Lucas Tracy MMA, people are going to take this with a grain of salt. But come on, this, this fight is a fucking waste of time. All right. We know the results. Islam Makhachev's going to go in there. He's going to get a takedown on his first attempt. Dustin Poirier is going to pull a guillotine and Makhachev's going to sub him. All right. Or Makhachev's just going to knock him out cold. Because the last time I checked, I know everyone was really hyped about Dustin Poirier finishing Benoit St. Denis, who couldn't even stand up to his feet without looking like he had just ran two marathons after the first five minutes, which is very rare for Benoit St. Denis. Dustin Poirier was getting his ass whooped in the clinch. He's older. He's not even like the best he's ever been. He's kind of been the same for like the past five years. I wouldn't be shocked if Islam Maksha beats his ass on the feet too. Because Dustin Poirier, he's a bit of a hooker, right? Throws a lot of hooks. Not a lot of straight shots all the time. Has some good straight shots, don't get me wrong. But he really likes to sit down on his hooks. And I just don't think he's going to be landing those big bombs on Islam Makhachev. I think Makhachev's going to be able to kick him at range. And I think it's only a matter of time before Makhachev gets his hands on this guy and just gets the free win. That's basically what it is. It's a free title defense for Makhachev. And everyone's going to say... Whoa, he finally fought a lightweight. Yeah, sure. I'm fucking sick and tired of the Islam Makhachev can only fight featherweights and the lightweights are the real test. Fight a lightweight, bro. And I get it. I get it. You want him to actually beat people in his own division because there are people that are in a logjam that deserve a title shot. In that end, I get it. But I almost feel like sometimes when people say things like, bro's ducking his actual division fighters and he's ducking lightweights, I get the sense that they're saying that the lightweights are kind of more dangerous or they're better? No, they're not. Max Holloway just came up and schooled Justin Gagey. Look at who gave Islam Makhachev the toughest fight ever. It wasn't Charles Oliveira who got smoked, all right? Who got made to look like easy work. There's only one guy in the lightweight division right now that gives Islam a tough test, and that's Armand Sharikian. And I think that Makhachev knocks him out on the feet anyway, so. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. The Dustin Poirier fans. Hey, Dustin Poirier fans, remember? And I'm a fan of the guy too. I'm a fan of the guy too. I love his style. I absolutely love his style, but this is war between me and the DP fans. I can't wait for the DP fans to be telling me all week, don't ever doubt Dustin Poirier. Remember that? Don't ever doubt Dustin, right? Okay, sure. I'm never going to doubt Dustin Poirier. Yeah, I'm doubting him heavily going into this one. And I'm going to ask you guys, hey, you're going to doubt him? I want to see a lot of people picking Dustin, okay? I better see 50% of the fan base, it seems, picking Poirier because you're never supposed to doubt him, right? Yeah, well, I'm doubting him. Islam Makhachev's tearing him up. Tearing him up. Subbing him with ease. Knocking him out. Which way do you want it? You want to go to sleep or you want to tap? <laughs> Dustin Poirier's going to tap. And I like Dustin. I do. I absolutely do. But it's time that we get another reality check. This man doesn't deserve a title shot. Justin Gagey had to fight three times against the best fighters on earth. All top five, top ten guys, former champions. 
to get a title shot at Islam Akshev. Dustin Poirier just needs one win over a guy with staph infection and he gets his? I mean, it's bullshit. And it creates a logjam too. I understand Islam Makhshev staying active is great, and it's better that he's not waiting until Abu Dhabi, because we know the Abu Dhabi game. We know the brother brothers in the Abu Dhabi game. They always wait till Abu Dhabi, and you know how they like their sweet time off. They always say, I'm going to be active, I'm going to be active. They like their sweet time off, and they say, I'll come back in February. February comes around. Wait a second. There's something going on. There's an injury. Next thing you know, you don't see him until Abu Dhabi. So there is a benefit there where Islam Makhshev is actually fighting this summer, he probably won't turn around in Abu Dhabi, but there's no excuse to not fight in December. So, I say, take care of Dustin, shut him down, okay? Get him out of there, and then fight Armand Streak in or Max Holloway. It's a shame, though, because in my perfect world, just because Armand deserves a title shot and Max Holloway deserves a title shot, and I kind of love the idea of Holloway staying at 155 pounds just because he worked his ass off to get up there, and he just had the best performance of his entire career. And now he's going to cut the weight off that he just worked hard to put on and have a hard weight cut. Screw that. In my perfect world, they should have done this. They should have said, all right, Max, Armand, both of you guys are getting title shots. Whoever wants it next. Okay. Armand, you want the title shot? Max, you're in line. You're a lock. Or Max, you want the title shot? Armand, you're in line. You're a lock. Because let's be honest, Makhshev's probably not losing to them. So it's like... Hey, at least we'll get a competitive fight, maybe. I understand the difficulty there is maybe Makhshev loses and you get a rematch or a trilogy or some shit like that. But I just love the idea of Max staying at 55 right now. Okay? Let me know what you guys think on that. Either way, Dustin Poirier, um, he's going to get smoked. And I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Dustin Poirier landed one big punch on Habib. Um, got smoked by Charles, second round, third round. Was getting smoked by Benoit St. Denis. Unless Islam Makhshev shows up and something really bad happens, something really terrible happens, I think he should win. And Sean Strickland, Paulo Costa, that's going to be the co-main event. I love that fight too. A little bit annoyed, another undeserved shot. I know it's not a title fight, but I'm a little bit annoyed that a guy like Paulo Costa, who's done mostly nothing but duck fights throughout the past couple of years, taken hiatuses, pulled out has one fight in the past couple of years and loses to Robert Whittaker. Before that, he had a win. Let's just call it a win over Luke Rockhold, <laughs> who he couldn't finish. It was a sloppy fight. And before that, he lost. So in his last three fights, which we've only seen three in the past like three years anyway, he's only had one win. And that was like multiple years ago. He's coming off of a loss and he's fighting former champion Sean Strickland, who's arguably the rightful champ, like who's arguably coming off of a win. I mean, there's an argument to be made, right? I think that DDP arguably won too, but my point is you're giving Paulo Costa the number one contenders fight after a fucking loss to Robert Whitaker. Like that's a bit of a disgrace, but it is what it is. It should be a fun fight. Strickland doesn't have any KO power. So this is most likely going to go five. And I think Sean Strickland is going to school him for five rounds. I think that Paulo Costa Yes, he's got a heavy pressure style, and there's something to be said about these big, heavy pressure guys with some thud that can march down Sean Strickland that have a good chin, because those are the guys that have success. But think about it. The guys that have success doing that are high fight IQ fighters like Jared Cannonier, who can start mixing it up really well, that is just more skillful and more technical than Paulo Costa, who has a longer reach and actually has power. Let's not go back to the big Paulo Costa has power bullshit actually has power, Jared Cannonier. This is not Drickus Duplessis, who's got a long reach, who actually has power, who's able to mix it up really well and also able to shoot a bunch of takedowns. So this is a heavy pressure guy with a short reach that doesn't have a high fight IQ, that doesn't really mix in the takedowns. I think that Sean Strickland is going to box him up. I think he's going to piece him up for five rounds, keep him at the end of the jab, beat Paulo Costa's ass, sting him coming in and i think we're gonna see a serious skill gap and you know what yes paulo costa's last fight against robert whitaker was very competitive it absolutely was but i think whitaker did not necessarily fight the way he needed to or you know he was saying to mighty mouse i saw an interview that he did with mighty mouse he was saying that he kind of needed to prove to himself that he was tough enough to hang in there with like a really physical guy like paulo costa 
and that that had kind of given him an issue against Rickus Duplessis. And in the fight, I saw Robert Whitaker biting down on the mouthpiece and kind of trading in the pocket, sometimes being irresponsible in that sense, where it wasn't the usual light on his feet, dancing around the cage, Robert Whitaker, that's stinging people, he's in and out, he's in and out, all right? I didn't see the karate blitz Whitaker. I saw the, the boxing Whitaker. And he's good as a boxer. And he ate the shots of Paulo Costa because Costa doesn't have crazy KO power. But Sean Strickland's got a better chin than Whitaker. He's a better... I, you know, Whitaker's an amazing boxer, actually. Different style of boxer. But I would even say Strickland's probably the better boxer. He definitely has the best defense in that division when it comes to boxing. And Strickland's not just going to trade in the pocket the same way that Robert Whitaker did. Strickland is going to smother Paulo Costa, but not necessarily trade in the pocket. He's going to tape him to the body. He's going to put pressure on Costa too. He's just going to bloody up his face. Just pop him around for five and shit talk him in the cage because I think Costa might even wilt to a guy like Strickland because I think he's going to do a much better job at putting on a serious pressure compared to Robert Whitaker, who's not necessarily the pressure type of guy. So I'm looking forward to this fight too. If Paulo Costa wins, what are they going to do? Give him a title fight? That, that's the thing that I don't understand about this. I mean, beating Sean Strickland should normally warrant that in today's day and age. But do you really deserve a title fight when you're one and three in your last four fights? I don't think so. You're coming off of a loss. You're just going to get a win over Sean Strickland. and Now you're fighting for the belt. Undeserved. But kind of deserved. If you beat Sean Strickland, it's kind of deserved. I just don't know why Costa's getting the spot. I guess it's because he's on a big contract and the UFC's trying to make the most of it. Again, why is he on such a big contract? I get it. He's an entertaining fighter. I love his style. He showcased toughness last time. He didn't quit. He didn't wilt. So he's there to, he's there to fight for five and he's going to put it on the line. Absolutely. But he's not that big of a star. So... Sean Strickland should get a nice tune-up fight, and maybe he'll get another title shot after this. So I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Until next time.